Welcome everyone to A Kaleidoscope of Color, Acorn Hall's John Crossley and Sons Carpets. Morris County Historic Society became stewards of Acorn Hall in 1971 when it was donated by Mary Crane Home. Acorn Hall is Morris County Historic Society's headquarters and the historic house museum with the front parlor being one of the first stops on a tour. The room is part of the original 1853 Georgian four square house built for Dr. John Skirmerhorn and his family. Prior to its remodeling to be Italianate villa style by 1860 for the Augustus Crane family. This lovely carpet has been in place for a very long time, but why is it so special? The carpet was made by John Crossley and Sons and is a duplicate of a carpet that was shown at the Great Exposition of London, the Crystal Palace, in 1851. This picture is from a scrapbook with photos taken in the 1970s, soon after Acorn Hall was acquired by MCHS. This view is of the front parlor looking toward the French doors leading to the front porch. Unencumbered by furnishings, the carpet's entire design is visible. The carpet has a savonnerie inspired design on velvet printed with 100 vegetable dyes. The front parlor carpet has an ivory field with a load medallion featuring lilies. This embellishment is surrounded by a wide burgundy border accented by scrolled cartouches, which is an ancient Egyptian styling, and entwined flowers. The Savonnerie design has been long revered. In the 17th century, French artists and weavers were employed by King Henri IV to invent the art of making Savonnerie rugs. This action was in response to the great influx of Oriental rugs coming into France. A Savonnerie rug was made by hand painting, called a cartoon, as large as the rug that was to be woven. The painted motifs were shaded and appeared three-dimensional. Thus, the unique characteristic of a European-made rug as opposed to rugs from the East. MCHS has a letter dated January 23, 1976 from Jonathan P. Crossley, Managing Director of Crossley's and Sons. In it, he states, as far as the method of manufacture is concerned, the rug is called a printed velvet and the color was applied to the face yarn before weaving. The yarns are arranged to pass over a large drum so that they laid side by side and formed an almost solid sheet. The dye was then applied by using hand blocks so that the necessary length and number of yarns were printed in the right color, a very intricate and painstaking operation. Once the yarn had been dyed and dried, it was taken to the loom and wound on beams. The book Victorian Interior Decoration mentions the double parlors at Acorn Hall are carpeted with an unusual imported tapestry Wilton. The passage further states that a tapestry drum could produce a velvet or tapestry Wilton. The pattern runs along the top of the carpet. The face yarns are not carried underneath. Essentially, a Wilton weave carpet is woven with the yarn being a continuous strand woven all the way through. The photo on the left shows the seam center of the picture where two halves were joined to create a larger wall to wall carpet. At the time, the loom was only six feet and nine inches in width. Both the front parlor carpet and the music room carpets are each 19 and a half feet by 14 feet eight inches. Unfortunately, the original loom upon which the Acorn Hall carpets were made no longer exists. A Crossley and Sons 1951 ad shows similar classic floral patterns. However, the company kept up with the times, offering new colors and styles as the years progressed. Yorkshire County in Northern England has been associated with woolen production since the 1500s. The founder of the company was John Crossley, who was a carpet weaver from Halifax. After a series of business partnerships in 1822, John Crossley renewed his lease at Dean Clow and set up his own carpet manufacturing business. At the time of his death in 1837, John Crossley's car carpet company had 150 looms and employed 300 people. 
His business ranked the fourth largest of its type in the country. His three youngest sons took on the business, renamed as John Crossley and Sons. In the mid 19th century, the company put forth many steam powered carpet manufacturing innovations. The buildings at Dean Clow were expanded, covering 20 acres and five to 6,000 people were employed. The company acquired patents and improved upon machi machinery, giving it advantages over other contemporary carpet manufacturers. Competitors applied to Crossleys for licenses to work their patents. The Crossley family continued in carpet manufacturing until gradually the demand for carpeting decreased in favor of vinyl flooring. The mills closed in 1983. The Great Exposition of the Works of Industry of All Nations or the Great Exposition or the Crystal Palace Exposition for the temporary glass structure housing the world's fair was organized by Henry Cole, a British civil servant and inventor and Prince Albert, the visionary husband of Queen Victoria. The exhibition ran from May 1st to October 15th in 1851, highlighting the industry, arts, and culture of not only the United Kingdom, but many other countries, including the United States. It was a financial success and attracted more than 6 million visitors. Exhibitors included the best examples of their company's workmanship to fairgoers eager to own similar manufactured goods in their homes. John Crossley and Sons occupied carpet stall number 142 in the South Central Gallery. This is another photo from the 1970 scrapbook with a good partial view of the music room's carpet. Acorn Hall also has another John Crossley and Sons carpet in its music room, which is thought to have been purchased to complement the noteworthy front parlor carpet. Both parlors join each other, although they are separated by carpet doors. We finish our look at Acorn Hall's special carpets with a view of the music room's beautifully coordinated John Crossley and Sons carpet. Thank you for joining us today at Morris County Stoke City to see Acorn Hall's magical John Crossley and Sons carpets.